most people wouldn't ask to be in a volcanic crater. But to a few men and women, it's a window into Earth's inner secrets. There's no way I would rather be than standing on top of a volcano. You can almost sense the power and the smell and the lava lake and the sound as well was, was exciting. I think it's just a really beautiful place. I guess I would say volcanologists are curious. You know, what we study is Mother Nature and every time I go to Hawaii and watch the lava flowing, I remember why I'm doing this. Being a volcanologist has obvious risks. It's one of the deadliest jobs in the world. When Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines threatened to erupt in 1991, nearly 75,000 people evacuated. Guess who stayed behind? A small team of volcanologists. Then the big one hit. Yeah, I see that thing started going. Well, that was gone. I think my underwear is about two and a half miles that way. Pinatubo delivered the largest eruption Earth had seen in 80 years. Jim Mori was in charge of tracking the volcano's earthquake patterns. Suddenly the two seismographs between the volcano and our observatory went dead and some large flow was coming off the mountain towards us and had destroyed the seismographs. That was one of the times when I first began to think, you know, what am I really doing here? A cloud of ash blocked the sun. A typhoon delivered torrential rains. The scientists knew they had to retreat. It would just be pelted by cherry-sized rocks. Uh, it felt like you know, the sky was coming down. There was a, a low roar in the background, which turned out to be this large lahar of mud flow that was going down a nearby river valley. Jim and his associates were fortunate, but other volcanologists have not been so lucky. On May 18, 1980, David Johnston manned a geological observation post on a ridge five miles north of Mount St. Helens. The volcano had been swelling for weeks. It was ready to erupt at any time. But Johnston remained at his post. When Mount St. Helens exploded, rocks the size of refrigerators blasted his trailer. The debris raced by at several hundred miles an hour. David Johnston's body was never found. Dozens of other volcanologists have met similar fates in the past few decades. They chose to live their life with these risks and they experienced more than thousands and thousands of people in their whole lives put together because they were willing to take these risks.